This week, episode 350 of Stogie Geeks, Nelson and I get to interview Cigar Man Andy. Every once in a while, you hear an interesting story about this fascinating industry. Smoking cigars at the Old Virginia Tobacco store, Andy was introduced to Benji Mendez at an event. Benji happened to be having trouble that day using Photoshop. And Andy fixed the problem. And then Benji asked Andy to teach him Photoshop. Andy said, sure. If you teach me tobacco, that'd be pretty cool. Then Andy started reviewing cigars on forums. And from there, he became a rep. And shortly after that, he decided to move out to the West Coast. And he became a broker. And he ended up. Representing brands such as 724, Los Blancos, Espinosa, La Pom, Pom, uh, blah, 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 La Paulina. That's okay. It's going to be a long day. It's been a long morning. And eventually, Kristoff. Now, Andy is retired, and he helps a few companies offline. I cannot wait to hear this fascinating story. And after the interview, we're going to wrap up the year and kind of give uh, some highlights about what happened as we wrap up this crazy year of the plague or the year that we call 2020. Stogie Geeks episode 350 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to Stogie Geeks, episode 350. Take a deep breath after that one. This is episode 350 of Stogie Geeks. I am your host, Joe Hosempa. A privilege and an honor to be here on the other side of the wall, but not in studio because of COVID regulation. We have, I guess you can say remote, even though he's kind of in the building, but not in the building, in the suite, maybe, right? Is that how that works? Not only is today Ugly Sweater Day, it is the last episode of 2020 of Stogie Geeks. You want to follow uh, Nelson or myself on Facebook there might be some experimental series between now and then. Um, I'm experimenting with stuff. That's dangerous. That's when people question my integrity. But anyway, we have a remote Nelson, who's right next door. <laughs> hey, what's up, Stogie Geeks? Glad to be back on. Uh, it's been an interesting ride here on Stogie Geeks. I'm glad I made it to the end. Joe hasn't thrown me off yet, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Joe. You know, the wheels on the bus are like, you know, it, 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 it's crazy. The training wheels are still on. The training it's wheels it's still crazy. On. It's crazy. And and, and um, here I am, or here we are. Uh, it's the last episode of the year. Um, super excited about this interview. 
um, you 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 had met Andy, and you told me his story, and 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 I gave it in our intro, which I thought was pretty flawless until I said La Polina wrong, <laughs> but it's okay. I, I don't worry. I've been uh, I've been mispronouncing cigar names since I started here, so why would? 2020, uh, why would the last show be any different? Prediction for 2021, I'm still going to mispronounce cigar names. It's just the way it goes. Uh, anyway, I want to uh, introduce cigar man Andy to Stoey Geeks. This is his first time coming on the show. Andy, welcome to the program. How are you? Thank you. Doing well, thanks. Just uh, enjoying life and a good Stoey. You, you know, um, you you sent me a story, and, and it be, it, it's fascinating, right? It's fascinating. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You're hanging out at Old Virginia Tobacco, and mm -hmm. you get introduced to Benji Mendez. He's got some problems with Photoshop. You fix the problems. He asked you to teach you a little bit more about Photoshop, and he taught you some stuff about tobacco. Oh, yeah. Let, let's elaborate on that because, you know, um, here at Stogie Geeks, we always talk about the brick and mortar experience right we know that mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a crazy world and in a covid world you know online i get it you got virtual hearths and virtual things going on and all these little forums and everything like that but you know uh, this is a classic like who you might run into walking into a brick and mortar take us through that story if if, if you could okay well you know i used to hang out in dc i used to live in that area and uh in Sterling, Virginia, there's uh, a guy by the name of Gary Pesh. He has a chain of stores called Old Virginia Tobacco. And it was right around the corner from my house. So I'd go over there, smoke cigars, and uh, got to know the guys well. And they said, oh, hey, you got to come down. We've got a couple of events coming on. Uh, you know, we have uh, Saul Fontana coming in. He comes in every year this time. And Benji Menendez is going to be in, or Lito Gomez, or you never know who's going to show up there. So I come in, Benji's there, and he's right before the event starts. He's trying to take pictures with a, a digital phone back then. We Not a digital phone, but a digital camera. Yep. And he, he's telling me, you know, I, I have a real hard time getting this stuff to work with Photoshop. So I said, well, I, I happen to know Photoshop pretty well. Maybe I can help. And so I, I fixed it on his laptop, and he asked me, he says, uh, can you teach me Photoshop? I said, yeah, it's not that hard to teach. And uh, I said, give me your phone number and I'll, I'll work with you while you, you know, over the phone. And he said, but I got a deal for you. So let's say, I said, I'll teach you Photoshop, but you got to teach me about tobacco. And he started, I, I had no idea really who Benji was at the time. Uh, the more we talked, the more I found out that Benji's father and Benji were the owners of Menendez y Garcia factory in Cuba. And his father, in 1934, had blended the Monte Cristo number two. And so now I'm really fascinated with this guy. Sure. <laughs> and uh, it, at the time, he had just done an article in Cigar Aficionado called The Son of Monte Cristo. And it was all about Benji. So I had Benji sign. This is the first autograph in the cigar industry I got. I had Benji sign the book. And uh, Benji and I started talking, and it opened up a wide relationship between the two of us, um, I wanted to know about the different profiles of the tobaccos from the Dominican Republic, from Nicaragua, from Honduras. Yeah, how do you blend a cigar? It, at the time, it was funny because Benji had been with uh, General Cigars for a long time. And he had switched over and started working for Altidus. And he had just blended a cigar called the Trinidad. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't ready yet. It's kind of a funny story. He told them, he said, uh, hey, I, I can't tour with this cigar. It's not ready yet. It needs another six months. And they said, you're going to tour with it. And he said, if I tour with this, it'll be the last cigar I tour with for all to this. And as a result of that incident, he went back to General Cigars right after that tour. And so I used to cherish when we would have the, at that time, uh, it was RTVA, uh, going to the RTVA and eventually IPCPR, now PCA. PCA. Yeah. Soon to be ABC. No, I'm, uh, that's yeah, not. Yeah, you that's, never that's know. That's Uma. But 
And Benji would do things like he'd say, well, I'm working on a cigar that is going to be called the Benji Menendez. And he would roll up a pachucha. Now, what a pachucha is, is you may take a leaf of lajero and a, a leaf of Seiko and you roll it up and you light it and you blow the smoke. And he would say, open this hand of kappa, of wrapper, and blow the smoke into the hand. And I would. And he goes, that's what I'm trying to accomplish. So he would teach me about blending and he would introduce me to people, such as we talked earlier about Ricky Rodriguez, who blends a lot for CAO. And uh, Benji is probably the most humble man in the cigar industry, you know, probably one of the most knowledgeable. And uh, he would say things to me like, oh, Andy, I want to introduce you to one of the new blenders. I'm learning so much from them. And keep this in mind, after 35 or 40 years of blending, you're saying you're learning from these new guys? That's telling you something. Yeah. Yeah. So he always taught me, stay teachable stay open-minded you know he gave me a line that has been a mantra for mine since day one smoke what you like and like what you smoke so semicolon but experiment a little <laughs> experiment. And, yeah and, and never never give up on a cigar when you've only smoked one of them or if you've only smoked a, a quarter of it or a third of the cigar take it as far as you can and see there may be something further on that you're going to enjoy. And uh, cigars have just been a passion for me. I've been smoking cigars since I'm 17 years old. And obviously that's a few years. Yeah. It's like three years. Yeah. Three or four. My, my ponytail is as gray as my t-shirt. So <laughs> yeah, that, that'll tell you something. Holy crap. I didn't know till this minute he had a ponytail. I had uh, no idea. I, <laughs> There you go. My my first um like I don't say experiment with 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 Benji Men, Benji uh, I've had the Podigus Master series, right? Uh -huh. And I was like this is good. You know what I mean? And 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 then we found a box online. <laughs> and we ended up buying a box. This is back in 2017 when I first started Story Geeks. But I've always known like some of the stuff that he's done and and some of the names and now it's like, you know, you you, you, you kind of give us a name of like the way back machine, right? Or at least my way back mm -hmm. machine. You know, when, when I owned a cigar shop in the late 90s through the beginning of 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 the of of 2000s. You know, it, it's like it's like, you know, you you're you that's one of those names that have been around then. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, uh that's why I found your your story fascinating because Time frame wise, when you met him, and there was a problem of Photoshop and digital cameras, uh, for you younger Stogie geeks, there was a time where you took a picture on a digital camera, loaded it up <laughs> on your computer, put it through Photoshop. It had filtering. Um, there was no Instagram, <laughs> which allowed you to snap a picture, change all the settings, take out red eye or whatever the heck it is, and then boom, you have a picture. Like those days, you know what I mean? And and it's crazy. Like that, I, I remember taking pictures of, of stuff and and I remember doing old school websites for cigar shops way back then when I had my business and like you know we we, we kind of got a camera and did it at the same angle and had a piece of felt so it had a, 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 a solid background and individually took pictures of product and then put it up on the website and whatnot now you can just have your I have my client snap a picture with their phone put it into a web page editor the web page editor has Photoshop esque settings enough to get the job done, and then rip them and then post them on the web, and they get done. So it, it's it's amazing how you met him at a time, because if you met him in 2018, that wouldn't have been a problem for him. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. Do you know what year that was journey. when you when you met him? It was uh, I want to say about uh, 2000, a little after 2000. Yeah. Sure. Yep. 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 Yeah. Things were yep. still. Things were still separate there from a digital. MySpace was just about to come online, and oh wow, uh, you know, email was you know, you got mail. Yep, you know, after a fifty-six k dial-up modem, and you know, what I mean, yeah. fifty-six. Boy, you had, you had the high ten <laughs> stuff, man. I was fourteen four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. Well, you know, um, times have changed, right? 
And then, right. and and then you became. So take us through that. So what type of what type of? I want to stay there for a second before I jump around, but I'll probably jump around because that's just how I am, mm-hmm. right? Like, what kind of lessons did you learn? And 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 where did he point you to? Because you got to remember, in in two thousand, right? Like you know, there wasn't a social media influencer program going on. Forums were there, but they weren't really there quite yet. So you had some hardcore people that are on the on the forums. I used to dabble in forums way way back when. Uh, there, I'm uh, guilty as charged. I am not like the, the modern day forum guy you know what i mean um that's one of the reasons why we have nelson here he's he's the eyes and ears for that right uh you know and and so like like where did he point you to go look right because when i learned my tobacco journey and we can get into that later on like you know it was like book it wasn't like yeah you go to this website watch this interactive video and you see the fields it was like yeah man like you get the book Mm -hmm. or I almost call it a process back then when you would go to like a cigar aficionado and I don't know, it, this is how my brain works. So I apologize if it doesn't like articulate to the, to, to the listener or you guys, but like, you know, when you read something like say 20 years ago and as a mm-hmm. consumer, you had to like read between the lines to kind of re-educate yourself about the product. So, yep. okay. So, so I did articulate that. That's great. So, um, that's change. And so, um, from there, like, where did he point you and what types of, of, of tidbits that you've, you've learned? And I just want to see how they, if they're still in existence today. Well, I, it, it's funny cause a lot of it really is, uh, at the time I was a member of club Stogie on the forum, Stogie geeks, cigar pass, and drew Newman had just started one called CFCF. Cigar Family Charitable Foundations page. Yep. And so uh, he said, you know, do do some reading on this and the other. And, and I would ask him questions like, well, what, what's the difference between Lajero and Seiko and Viso? And he would he actually sent me a chart at one time which showed, you know, everybody has heard of Lajero, Viso, and Seiko. Right. I mean, most people don't realize how many leaves there are from Desflorado on a female plant underneath the the flower to Lajero, Viso, Seiko, Volado, and sand, you know, sand leaves. So I would look at the charts and I would ask him, what's the difference? And could you smoke this by itself? And he would tell me little things about, uh, well, you can check out by, by looking on Wikipedia at the time was still relatively new, but they had information about tobaccos. Um, there was an article he it was directed to from AJ Fernandez, uh, which was a literally a, a dissertation for a school project for for his degree on the history of tobacco um, and learning, you know, just just a lot of the little tidbits back then. So uh, the thing about the forums, and I'm still a member of a couple of the forums, uh, still go on. Uh, the forums at that time, uh, you would go on and not only would you see, Benji wasn't a forum guy, but uh, we had Dion Giolito, we had Pete Johnson in 2010 started, or 2006 started coming on, uh, and Gene Argonese and so on down the line. Uh, there were a lot of brands back then that no longer exist or have since sold, uh, like Tony Barania, uh, Tony Barani. Uh, and Gene, they, they both sold out to CI. Uh, he would have me look on the forums and ask questions. And they would answer me with loving information like, hey, stupid, use search. Stop asking a question that's been asked 20 times. Go on to search. You'll find your answers. <laughs> and so that's when I discovered if you're going to be anywhere in the cigar industry, you have to have a thick skin and learn to give it back as good or better than what you get it. Um but he would research a lot of that stuff and he would say, get to meet some of the people in the industry. So he would say, go to every event you can. And pretty soon I had met Raymond Schur, who was uh, uh, Avo's right hand with Davidoff. Uh, Saul Fontana, who had a cigar called Baccarat, who's uh, uh, Christian Aurora's uncle when he was alive. 
Mm -hmm. I would start meeting these people and I would ask them questions. And then eventually I took a trip to the Dominican Republic and Mm. uh, started learning about tobacco. I would go to a factory or two out there. Went to Fuente back in 2005 for the first time. Uh, Got to know the people at the factory then. And uh, I I have to tell you this story because this is this is a to me one of the greatest days of my life. I got invited to Gary Pesch's 35th anniversary of Old Virginia Tobacco. And uh, I have a picture of what I call the Rogues Gallery. Everyone was there. I had Jorge Padron. I had Ernie Carrillo. I had Christian Aroa, Carlito Fuente, Eileen Frankie uh, Ogdensner, who you know from, who you still in CAO with, with Tim, her brother and her father. And we had all these people there, Benji Menendez. Benji introduces me to Jose Blanco. Jose Blanco looks at me, and so we were talking about La Aurora earlier. I was smoking a Preferito Cameroon. Ooh, Johnny's favorite, and, producer. <laughs> and, and I had the tube in my pocket. <laughs> and the first thing that Jose Blanco says to me is, you know, if you buy that cigar, and you can buy that same cigar without the tube, it's $4 less. Yep. You know, and it, it started relationships with all these people. So Benji and Gary introduced me to just about everybody that you'd want to meet in the industry. Lito Gomez and all these guys. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful event. And I knew at that point, this is where I wanted to go. And, you know, it's funny. I was uh, reviewing cigars. And I think I may have mentioned this when I sent you the little blurb. Uh, I did a review on uh on uh, I think it was Cigar Pass, on the Argonese, uh, it was the uh, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I got an email, a private message. Back then, that's where you got your private messages. Um, from a guy who said, "You are the first guy who nailed it." What I was trying to accomplish with that cigar. Um, the RTDA is coming up. Why don't you come? And be my guest. I'll get you a ticket. I'll leave it at the front. You just come in and sign in and boom. So I go to the RTDA and I find Gene Argonese and he hired me on the spot to be a rep. And the rest is basically history. You know, it's he was explaining to me the difference between repping and brokering. And he says, you know, if you really wanted to broker, you could or you can rep. If you broker, you can handle multiple lines. And to me, it, it, this is an unfortunate thing for some some guys, but not to me. It means, oh, gee, I can get three, four brands, five brands, and I can smoke everybody's cigars, and I can compare them, and yada, yada, yada. And so uh, eventually, and i got to tell you the story. I'm going to give kudos. Uh, all of a sudden, now not only do we have MySpace, we've got a new app coming out. It's called Facebook. Mm. And I get on Facebook. And one day I get an email on Facebook, Ghost from the Past. And it turns out it was my first wife. Oh, boy. And uh, I had never fallen out of love with her. And we started conversing. And next thing I know, I'm talking to Jean, and I'm on my way to California where she's at from Virginia. And Jean gives me California. Wow. And so uh, I reconciled with Marisa and... uh, yeah, we've been back together 11 years. We're going to be married 10 years again here in just a couple of weeks. Um, but all of a sudden, I get a reputation that if you can sell Arganese, you can sell anything. Mm. Okay? Keep keep this in mind. I'm selling boxes wholesale for $70 and $75 that you can buy online for like $39. Right. And I'm selling them to the stores. Then I get phone calls from this guy and that guy. And pretty soon I'm, I've got four lines. You know, I'm selling great cigars. 724 is an awesome cigar. Yes. Um, and, and, and Kirk Kendall, you couldn't ask for a nicer guy to work with. You know, and I'm selling uh, Los Blancos, who we won't get into to that one. And uh, But I, I enjoyed the Los Blancos cigars. Um. And all of a sudden, I'm with La Polina and then Christoph, 
And, uh, you know, somebody said to me, well, are you, are you, you're not a typical broker, are you? I said, no, you know, I guess I'm kind of a brand builder because that's what I like to do. Yes. I like to take a brand that nobody's heard of and make it work. Um, when I took La Polina, they were in six stores in California. And I'll never forget this. You want me to sell a cigar that nobody's heard of that's retailing for $26 to $30 a cigar and sell it. And they said, yes. And I said, okay. Yep. <laughs> and I got them in 110 stores. Right, right. Um, wow. Breath, uh, I, I, you, that takeaway, uh, you, uh, there's so many things that I want to get into. Um, brand, brand awareness, influencer, having thick skin in the industry, my La Polina story, my Kurt Kendall story. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but before we go there, and it's now 38 minutes before Nelson says anything. Nelson, you want to chime in? Uh, I do, yeah. I wanted to go back to when you were Benji and, and you were talking about the, when you were doing the tobacco. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm going way back. We've gone on a journey with yeah. Andy. And by the way, I'm a great guest. I love this journey we're hearing about. Thank it's you. not things you typically hear about. Um, that whole process where he, you know, he, he, he lit the tobacco. And have you seen that done um, after that moment? Yeah, every time I'm in a factory. Uh, so that's so that's it, a common it, practice. It, it's a common practice. Actually, I was involved with a company where I was uh, given part ownership in it for a while, and uh, uh, I was helping blend a couple of cigars. And it's the same process the the master blender and I went through. Uh, we went to. Uh, I, I'm sure you know who Hochi Blanco is. Yep. Um, you know who Hochi is, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, Hochi's gonna. Uh, seven warehouses each the size of raiders of the lost ark uh full of tobacco and he would say well what kind of tobacco were you looking for and uh, for instance i was looking for one called Talanga, which is a uh, connecticut grown in honduras and uh we pulled out a bale and then we walked over and picked up a piece of uh piloto lajero and a lore uh, Viso, and we rolled the Pachucha, and I was blowing it in hands from different batches of the Talanga to find a wrapper I would like. Uh, flavor was there. You can smell it. it. It gets into the tobacco. That smoke gets into the tobacco. And when you up to your nose, you just get an aroma. So I, I learned about it originally from Benji, but every master blender <clears throat> that I have ever sat with or talked with or looked at them blending, that's their process they use. That's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That, I, I, I did have another thing I wanted to ask Andy was, you know, at that moment where, you you know, you said you were hired on the spot, um, moving forward did you have a mentor i mean because you know you sure you learned some in your fo photoshop trade-off um you learned some things about tobacco but did you have a mentor uh for the sales aspect part of it you know you said you you took something to 110 shops so you know was there a mentor that that you listened to you know it's funny um i knew a few reps um in Virginia, I met a rep who taught me what not to do. Uh, he went into, he, he did an event, this, this guy, I won't tell you his name, but he had worked for Ashton and I'm sure he's no longer with Ashton. And he had said, oh yeah, somebody asked him, how do you do Maduro tobacco? And he said, oh, we put chocolate and ammonia in, in a container and fermented tobacco in it. And I'm going, what? You know, so I learned a long time ago from people like that. If you don't have an answer, don't give it. Okay. Don't, don't fake it. People right. aren't stupid. And so I would watch what the guys who were not successful were doing to learn what not to do. And then I would hang on to people like, uh, Michael, uh, Doherty from Fuente and watch what he does because Michael is just one of the best reps I've ever met. Another really good one was Ron Wagner, who was with General Cigars for years. Now he's with Rocky Patel. Um, 
eventually the guys who worked with me with Christoph, I, I would watch what they did that they were successful at and what not to. Now that's great for a basis, but every area is different. For instance, in your neck of the woods in the Northeast, a lot of the reps wear ties. Where I'm at in California, you get laughed out of the store if you walk in with a tie. So you got to learn to take the positive stuff and make it your own and put your own spin on it. So what's worked for me is that uh, what makes a good rep a good rep is a relationship. It, it's all based on relationships. Yes, you have to have a cigar that can hold its own. But if you don't have a relationship, they're not going to take your cigar. So I learned to hang out at shops, get to know the clientele at shops, um, learn not to just start handing free cigars out to people because I could. Uh, I always ask a manager because one time I was in a shop and I, I watched a rep say, hi, I'm from yada yada brand and here, try our new cigar and hands out about 15, 20 cigars. And the owner pulled him aside, and this is early on, the owner pulled him aside and said, you know, you just gave away and took about $400 out of my pocket. So I never give cigars out without asking a manager or an owner first, or who are your money spending customers that you want to take care of. And you'll learn. It's all by experience. Making appointments instead of just dropping in. If you drop into a store, don't do it to sell do it to hang out and if they want to talk sales with you they will so it's all stuff you learn but my mentor in the the, the bar none is the best is a compilation of about 30 different reps that i've met i just took the best and left the worst yeah no that's great yeah i i uh i've i've been involved in multiple facets within this industry and i had a nine month stint as a rep um broker and uh you know it was the same way right i i would first go into the shop never to sell right always kept the thing in the in the trunk or the backpack um not much has changed nelson just so you know a ziploc bag full of samples right <laughs> joe's not really a humidor guy <laughs> yeah, right? you know um you know and and it's like i would go there I would introduce, you know, find out who the owner is, you know, and I wouldn't do it secretly. I would just be like, you know, well, oh, yeah, you know, he comes in on this day, that day. Okay, cool. Make a mental note, sit down. Always fascinated with, with their humidor, right? Um, you know, I love going into different humidors. Uh, here in Rhode Island, we have like 39 shops and we're only like a 30 minute drive through with no traffic. So basically, they're like Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks, they're on every corner almost, right? And so, but, feet. but they all have different, different characteristics. Some of them have mm -hmm. cool stuff. Some of them have stuff I'm into. Some of them are just, they run, they run of the mill. Right. And, um, ironically, uh, out of the 39, two of them have taken me, uh, out for either uh, coffee or uh, a beer or a drink to vet my knowledge and find out if I know my shit or if I'm full of shit. Uh, that's why I ha most of them do terrible, right? Um, mm -hmm. that, that's just personal observation. But when I was a rep, you know, I would just kind of, you know, be myself and find out where the owner is. And after I bought something of theirs that I think that I would want to try, like legitimately want to try, we got to talking. I'd introduce myself and then I would always go right before I leave, you know, you tab out and whatnot. And I would always go to the car and then come back and then give them samples and then walk out. Because it was, to me, it was a respect for time thing. It wasn't, if, if it wasn't an appointment, right? It wasn't a, mm -hmm. it, it's like, it's not my agenda. It's you own the shop. Bears. I would love the opportunity to have shelf space. And that's what I did. And it, it went, it went well, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I left after nine months, um, just because, just because it, it 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 just wasn't a good fit, right? It just it just was not a good fit, um, there, and so. But that was the like you know I was myself. I had respect for their time. I ended up doing promotions and I ended up leading into other stuff and whatnot. And yeah, we've had some some super cool events and and it was fun. But having respect for their time and you know 
I've gotten in I've gotten in ton of conversations with idiotic reps. Uh, La Flora Dominicana comes to mind this year, right? When you know we're talking about the Northeast distribution thing, and he's telling me how good his cigar is. I'm like, I don't care how good your cigar is. I'm not gonna try it. He's like, why? I go, because if the cigar owner orders it in March, it's not being delivered till July. It's not fair to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, well, you know, let me tell you how the industry works. Oh, please do. Right? Please tell me how this fascinating industry works. And like the kid was just running, and I'm like, dude, you didn't even know, you didn't even know like distribution 101, right? Uh, here comes the hate mail. Email the hate mail to Nelson at StogieGeeks.com. <laughs> he has time for that, <laughs> right? You know, there's <laughs> another sponsor <laughs> out the door, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and, and like it is what it is. Or, or I'll go into a cigar shop and, 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 and the rep would be like, oh, you know, but that's a classic thing, a classic problem when uh, the rep would just stop passing out cigars, right? I have mixed feelings on that. Always get the shop owner's permission. I, now, Always. if I went to the second time and, the, and they recognized me as the, the rep for that particular cigar, and he'd be like, some of them have even, did, they knew I was the rep, and they said, hey, if you have any samples you want to pass out to the guys, go for it. I didn't even have to ask, because I think if you do it properly, it's like business, right? If you do mm -hmm. it properly, you won't have to ask for permission. Right. That goes back to building the relationships well, that Andy course. was talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to do that. You know, it and does. The only time I've ever handed cigars to people in shops without asking the owner's permission is if somebody's in the humidor and I'm working his humidor for him, just helping out. Yep. And the guy's buying four cigars. I go, hey, you know, if you buy six, I'll give you one of mine. Yeah. And, you know, and, and so I just boosted his sales. Yes. Not declined him right. uh and thank thankfully a lot of the time it's oh you're looking at this brand well you know i represent that brand so if you buy two more i'll give you one free yep you know so th there's a way to do it yep but yeah the owners will tell you once you get to know it once you become a part of the fixture if i'm going into a store and it's 10 years since i started going into that store they know me pretty well by then if they're the, the same people right right and so they're going to tell me what they want me to do or what they don't want me to do. So I want to get an idea uh, so we can talk a little bit of business here. I want to mm -hmm. get an idea of time frame. Where were you? No, I knew where you were. You were in California. What year is it when you were representing 724 Los Blancos Espinosa? That's fascinating. I, I'd mm -hmm. love to hear about that. La Polina and Kristoff. Mm -hmm. What what year was that? Because that that's going to determine where I go with with the conversation. Yeah, it was late 2010. Okay, so 2010. So 2010, where was okay? Okay, so uh, 724, right? Uh -huh. New on the scene, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Espinosa, you know, really boutique at that time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, La Polina classic like classic but kind of get a, a reputation of why they priced the davidoffs some of them mm -hmm. are really really good right some of them are really really good and can rival some davidoffs especially some mm -hmm. of the new stuff that davidoffs coming out with um and then christoph which for us here in the northeast 2008 is when they started to to kind of ramp up so you you have you you have a lineup of some and Los Blancos, which is down at CI. So mm -hmm. you kind of had a hard task in front of you from a yeah. marketing and branding perspective. So, like, what were your approaches other than giving out samples to the reps? Like, you got to educate them, like, like 724. Like, you know, yeah, this guy named Kirk Kendall, it was his old factory. We know the story. At the time, he had what? Like, uh, 2010, he had the Hustler. He had the. It was only the regular. He didn't have the hustler mm -hmm. back then. He was the seven twenty four. That was it. it. That was it. The reg. The, the original blend. Okay. Right. And then he came out with the the uh, Habana the uh, the nineteen forty one. Yep. Uh, which came out right before he came out with Hustler and Spider. Those were two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen. Okay. Yeah. So so you had one line, different sizes, but 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 one. One line uh, for 724, mm -hmm. Los Blancos, which is half the price online, 
uh, Espinoza, right? And and then La Polina, which can be conceptually considered as overpriced at the time. I get that. And then Kristoff. Mm-hmm. Like like so, what what approaches did you use? Like because you 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 had a challenging lineup when you walked in the door versus I don't know Altadis General. Well, okay. So l- let me fix you up on the timeline just a little bit on this. So um, you know, in 2010, I had Los Marcos Organis and Kristoff. Um, and then I brought in 724 in 2011. Gotcha. 2011, uh, Los Blancos and I kind of started getting ready to part ways. Uh, brought in La Polina. Uh, Espinosa was about 2012. Um, and then, you know, there were brands that I was, I was starting to get a reputation. So I was getting calls from different, like there was a group that, um, uh, uh that had like 30 different brands in it. I mean, they had like uh, 1502 and uh, Ezra Zion and, uh, you know, uh, just just a, an assortment of, of cigars, uh, Rodrigo. Uh, I kept them for six months. I said, I don't think it's going to work with us because it's too many lines. It's like going in with general cigars. I'm going to need a catalog to, to try and do anything. Mm-hmm. Better give them six months. Uh, I had a guy who was, who had me, I, I stayed with him six months, a guy by the name of Lou Rodriguez, who did the classic, the classic, I want to feel in the cigar industry statement. Uh, what does your cigar taste like? Who, what are the brands? I don't know. I don't smoke anybody's but my own. That's all I ever smoke. <laughs> Nothing else is worth smoking. By the way, have you ever seen a Lou Rodriguez? So that gives you an idea. And I would judge how hard I would work for a brand based on the owner. How's the owner going to respond to people when I bring them out? Mm, good so point, too. Kurt, Kurt Kendall is awesome. Mm-hmm. And I love Kurt to death. Kurt would come out two, three times a year. And, uh, you know, I, I would let him talk. Yeah. When you have an owner... You shut up and let him talk. Yep. Whoa, he just had a mute moment. All right, anyway, yeah, do, he's got some technical. Did we lose audio? Yeah, he, we, we lost audio, and then it looks like he lost video. He'll figure it out. Are you there, Andy? I'm here. All right, cool. You were on Kurt Kendall. Okay, so... Kirk Kendall's a great guy, and he knows how to talk to people and do the business. And when Kirk talks, you shut up. Yep. Okay. Plus, Let he's cool. He's cool. He's into tattoos and hot rods, like legitimately. Like, you know what and I mean? Boats, <laughs> and motorcycles <laughs> and guitars. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he's like, he's like, dude, uh, you know, he's super cool. Yeah. Kendall's awesome. Um, so, you know, it. You just kind of got to massage your way around and see what works at what shops, you know, and who not to bring. Uh, There was a brand I worked for. uh, I'm trying to remember the guy's name now. He had a brand uh, uh, out of Miami. But the guy, oh, here, here's a prime one for you. I had Burger and Argente. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, I would get like 20 stores for burger and argente mike would come out mike argente open his mouth and i'd lose six stores yeah sure you know uh, so you gotta know who to bring out and who not to gotcha it, it, you have to learn your your business um i won't bring any any names into a few of the the companies that are still active that it, i'm not with that were bad partings but most of the partings that I had were because the owner really uh he was his worst enemy. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That 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 was my my stint with the uh experience with with broker. We just we just couldn't see eye to eye and I'm just like, yeah I'm out. Like uh, peace. You know? And uh he's not in the industry anymore. Go figure. You know, yeah. uh, you know, and 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 you just you just know you just, it's got to be a feeling. Like I know I talk about this uh, on other shows, but it's like it's like you it just just 
just be you and as a feeling and go going to a cigar event shouldn't have to be stressful for the repo broker right no. and yeah you do have to have thick skin in this game i know you began today's interview with that you know which is so true i mean there are so many companies that just have thin, thin skin and they worry or they're externally centered or they're trying to be like somebody else like dude or chica like you know just just get your stuff together and be you and just you know at the end of the day smoke cigars and make money <laughs> you know that's it like that's you know it. just smoke cigars and make money and if you can have a good time along the way then cool if not then you're not doing it right that's it and, and here's the key uh a lot of reps become reps because they think they can have a lot of fun smoke for free and make a little money on the side mm. and when you're a broker, the first thing you learn when you first start brokering is you have to have enough money to last you at least a year before you start making anything. That's true. And especially if you're a brand builder. Right. Plus you gotta do your own travel and you know, travel expenses and all of that stuff and, and expenses for just putting on events and it's just it's crazy. And and you, you know. do. I had a rep come up to me one day and I'll never forget this. He said, Hey, I, you know, I really appreciate you and respect what you do, but you need to help me on something. And so what's up? He goes I went into a place for the first time, and I don't know what I said to piss people off, but they were busting my balls like there was no tomorrow, and I, I didn't say anything that deserved it. I said, dude, you, 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 and here again, you have to have a thick skin and learn to give it back better than you get it. If they didn't like you, they wouldn't talk to you. True. If they're busting your balls, it means they like you. Right. Okay? Right. You, you just got to learn learn how to do it and learn what not to say to yep. people because there are there are reps that broach yeah i i love the rep that walks in and he goes well what are you smoking oh i'm smoking a macanudo uh hyde park oh that cigar sucks yeah yeah sure yeah. what kind of a rep does that <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, know, you should all be about the experience and you should be about you know the 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 work effort that goes into each stick in the premium yeah. cigar industry and well you know here's the thing okay you know you know i got a little thing that happened with christoph but i still like christoph cigars i still like the smokes and one thing about christoph they're into bottle rolled okay most people don't really get into you know the style rolling whether it's yes. booked or into bottle or simple into bottle but one thing about into bottle i've never had a plug to christoph Ever. Ever. And, you know, that's a big plus. You know, when you when a guy lights a cigar and it's like trying to suck a, a, a grape through a straw, that, that's not an enjoyable thing. Right. So, you know, you got to know about your cigars. It's not always about the blend. I always tell people when they start getting into real technical questions in a cigar shop at an event, you know, well, well, where does your tobacco come from and what part of the plant, what priming is it? And they want to look big. Yeah, I, I just kind of blow it off and answer as best I can. But there's only two things a consumer really needs to know about a cigar. They like it or they don't like it. You know? Right, right. Yeah, and, I did a whole a whole stint on Cigar Club Radio pre-Stogie Geeks on the Entubato Road uh, from, from mm -hmm. Christoph. It's a super cool process. Uh, and and you are right. You never have a a a plugged Christoph. You know, it's yeah. And 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 I think a good takeaway from 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 what you've been saying here is it's you gotta always be in a state of consistent learning, right? Always, always, because you know, like anything else, it, everything's ever changing, and uh, you know, you gotta you gotta stay on top of. Of whatever version of the business that that you have um there it's good it's good advice things things change in this industry all the time now it's ironic that you're the stogie geeks because i am a tobacco geek yep. okay i'm the idiot that goes to to dominican republic start in santiago go to tamboril go to banal go to santo domingo and i'm in a car with a guy who knows what grows where and I'm saying, help me to discover what different genus of plants look like. Sure. You know? Yeah. 
if, if I'm going down the road and I see a four foot high plant with long, narrow leaves and somebody says, well, what's that? I, I want to be able to say that's piloto, you know? Right. If it's a seven foot plant with big fat leaves, I want to be able to say it's a war. I, I want to know for myself. And if something I know can help somebody, great. I'm the idiot who goes, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. That's true. That's true. Um, Nelson, you have anything you want to add? Sorry, I had to get off mute. Uh, yeah, Andy, I was curious. You know, you've been through a journey. You're retired now. Um, you've met God knows how many people. I know you mentioned one moment earlier where you, you, you met some of the titans of the cigar industry. Um, back in the day, you have a photo. But I'm wondering, you know, what, what was one of your favorite moments on this cigar industry journey uh, that you've been on? You, you're going to kind of laugh at this. Um, I, I'm pretty close with the Fuente family. Okay. Um, I do things socially with, with them. Uh, one of my favorite things was watching Liana Fuente trying to earn money for breast cancer. Now, my mother is 97, a four-time cancer survivor. When uh, Liana runs, she's got a shirt she wears, and in the middle of her back is my mother's name. So, obviously, I'm a big supporter. Liana said if she can earn $40,000 for breast cancer, she was going to shave her head. We all got on... Uh, a combination of our little group that you've joined in the Zoom Cigar Bar, um, the Jeremiah Mirafeld and Fuente, you know, Meet the Professor show, started talking about that. She raised eighty-five and a half thousand dollars for breast cancer. I actually watched the video of her shaving her head. Yeah. Her father shaved her head, and all the hair was donated for wigs for breast cancer. I was never as proud of anybody in the cigar industry as I was for her at that particular moment. Mm. That's one of my all-time favorite events. And there's one other one I want to bring up, too, because it's kind of uh, kind of an important one for my key, but it may upset some people, it might not. Um, I had dinner one night with Lito Gomez. This is back nine, ten years ago. And Lito and I were talking, and I said, hey, do you remember this picture? And it was from about five, six years previous. And he goes, yeah. I said, do you consider us friends? And he said, yes, I do. And I said, I can't. And I, he, he looked at me and said, what? What?" I said, talk to me about you other than the cigar industry. What did you do? Where are you from? Uh, how did you grow up? Where did you go? And he talked to me about growing up in Uruguay and having a pawn shop and doing jewelry work and so on and so on. And I said, now we're brothers. One of the things that irritates me is somebody goes to an event, meets Rocky Patel one time, and all of a sudden he's my best friend in the world. Mm. Oh, I know Rocky well. Okay. Get to know people. The, the, the titans of the cigar industry are just people. Yep. All right. And, they're wonderful. Don't get me wrong. If you look at them as gods or giants, hey, hey, knock your socks off. But if you want to call somebody in the industry your friend, get to know them. Right. No more than just the cigars. There's a lot more to them. Even the Fuente family, who's had three, four generations of tobacconists, okay, four generations of making cigars, there's a lot of the personal family stuff that is really fascinating to get to know. Don Carlos was a very big horse fan. He loved horses, race horses, polo horses. Didn't matter. He loved horses. Get to know them personally, and a whole nother world opens up to you. That's that. So I will tell you, I wanted to smack Rocky Patel one night. He came to our RV to watch a football game and called it a camper, and I wanted to smack him. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> that some of them have their moments, you know, but. They all do. <laughs> I, I gotcha. But yeah, no, that that's very good advice. Like they are people in from this industry. One of the keys to success for me within this industry 
whatever facet that I was in at the time was, you know, being in that brick and mortar, similar to your story, right? And asking. And 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 I tell the story of geeks often, very often, throughout different interviews. Like you gotta get involved with going to your local cigar shop. It's it's a riot. Uh, some of it becomes nonsense. Some mm-hmm. of it becomes very soap opera esque sometimes. Um, but you never know who you're gonna meet. You never know in, in a pre COVID world. You never know who you're gonna meet. Like oh, one of the most interesting. Um, uh, seminar, I guess you could say seminars, they were just a bunch of dudes hanging out smoking, was meeting Jose Blanco. Mm-hmm. And Jose Blanco is a huge fan of this show, huge fan of Paul, the original founder of, of Stogie Geeks. And, you know, like, even, like, to get to know, like, the person, like, Jose Blanco had some computer problems, like, 60 mm-hmm. days ago like he called Paul cell like I was literally in a meeting with Paul uh, The founder of security weekly and study geeks and he's like Jose Blanco's calling me on my cell phone I'm like well he's pick it up. That. I'm like pick it up you can interrupt our meeting like you know what I mean He's like hey, and he legitimately had a, like a computer problem and he knows that Paul is Founder of security weekly and freaking Paul like cooked up did some stuff and hooked him up and then next thing you know freaking he sent them some some of his private stash you know what I mean I love as stories a, like as that a thank you and 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 you know I have stories like that with with Kurt right I remember at the time I had a had an advertising agency I, I it's still open today um, and the I met Kurt at an event and he was talking about like branding and 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 this is all like he's about to go in the magazine right and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and i'm like well what types of ideas are they doing and he's telling me this idea i was like they don't even know you i'm like dude you in front of your freaking car collection with your sleeves rolled up is enough for any advertiser like i could have a field day with that i emailed him a quote he went he went with someone else but it's like it's like you get you got to know them you know what I mean, and and mm-hmm. and 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 you have super cool stories of that, right? I remember going to the uh, the Manuela Noah, where they separate the preferitos. They 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 did a stint with the La Aurora, the, uh, La Aurora company, the um, Light the Legacy. You know, you get mm-hmm. to smoke all the different preferitos, and you smoke them all at once, and you you know it's an educational process. And then I've had mm-hmm. the opportunity at uh, like two years later to interview Manuela Noah here in studio. And, you know, and, and, and interviews like that just happened. Like, he was next door at the cigar shop. You know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, you want to come to the Story Geeks? Yeah, sure, blah, blah, blah. I'll be around. And, and then we just, you know, fired up the cameras and, 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 and did it up, you know? And, and that was in the glory days when we only had four shows plus Story Geeks. Now we have seven shows <laughs> plus Story Geeks. And we're now a network of shows, and we have no time. But <laughs> Do you know who James Orr is? O-R is the last name? Yeah. James Orr. James Orr. O R R. Oh, I don't. Oh, no. Remember Three Men and a Baby? Yes. He was the producer and director of that movie. Okay. He did a bunch of movies. Okay. So I'm sitting I was a little young baby. in that movie. I was in the eighties, just so you know. I wasn't <laughs> well, if you got a movie channel, it shows that I'm from time to time or on holiday classics, but I'm sitting in a cigar lounge and um I, I'm sitting with a guy. I, all I know is his name is James. I'd never met him before. And we're, we're shooting the shit. And I'm telling this guy about this movie that I loved called Blowing Smoke, which you can't find anywhere. And James starts laughing. He said, Wait, what's funny? He goes, do you know I produced that movie? I directed that movie. No kidding. It, no, seriously. Yeah, it, yeah. It, And I said to him at that point, I said, you know, I was very impressed with the fact that you took five non-smoking, cigar-smoking people and taught them how to smoke cigars with Patron Anniversarios, Opus X, and (laughs) One-Off. He goes, how'd you know that? I said, well, I I watched the extras and everything. And he goes, dude, you're my hero. Nobody knows who One-Off is. (laughs) Nobody knows. Nobody ever does this part. He said, I've been doing these things for years. Do you ever see that video, uh, Journey to the Chateau La Fuente? De Fuente? The what? The Journey to the Chateau de Fuente. No. 
to the no. Chateau Franca. It came. It used to come when you bought like a a, a box of Forbiddens. Okay. You know, like they'd have two Forbiddens and a DVD in a book. And anyway, I found out he produced that for Carlito. Oh, no kidding. And he was the original voiceover for that. And then apparently they didn't like his voice, so they had Andy Garcia go over it and do the, the narration afterwards. But but it, it's running into people like that who you never know right? who you're going to run into. You know? Um, yeah, I, I can't even begin to tell you how many actors, especially being out in L.A. or in uh, uh, Malibu or whatever you run into, you know, that, that you smoke with. I mean, I could go on and on and on about actor, actor, musician, 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 actor, actor, actor. But you just run into them at cigar shops and you never know where you're going to find them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hell, that's how I found people? Joe. I've run in I've run into I've run into a couple of local local ones. I mean obviously we're not California, right? You know, yeah. uh we're we're here in Northeast, but like James Woods would come yeah. to the Humidor smoke shop and, and uh up until he, he um uh stopped smoking cigars. But you know, he would come in and one night be like, I like it here, I can hide <laughs> you know, because only five, six yeah. guys are not all starstruck, this and that and whatnot. I've uh been in Providence when I had my cigar shop, we we had a couple of of uh, of patriots and and either red socks or poor socks come in and and get cigars and stuff like that and you know it, it's super cool and they would hang out for a little bit and then just leave and like i said it it's it, it, it's 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 all part of that encompassing embracing part of the community that um you know some of our stogie geeks listeners miss out on by not going into their local brick and mortar you want to have fun sometime i'll tell you what I was in uh, in the valley, and I was sitting there smoking with Scott Bale, the first time. And he he asked me, he goes, "What do you do?" I said, "Well, I'm the rep for such and such a company." And he said, "What do you do?" And you know, he said, "Oh, well, I, I'm an actor." But it was just fun to pretend like I didn't know who he was or sure. what he did. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah. You know? Yeah, I used to, did, did you ever watch Happy Days? No, nah, I can't say I have. <laughs> and then I messed with him, you know. But but it was fun. And you, know? you still have a ponytail, so something strikes me that you wore a leather jacket and a T-shirt in your day. Um, I did. <laughs> I wore leather jackets. I still wear leather jackets. Hey, man, Happy Days. Uh, what is it? Live, live fast, love hard, and never let anyone use your comb. Never let anyone use your comb. <laughs> That's it, advice I follow. You, oh yeah, you know, and, and roll your cigars, or your cigarettes up. You know, if you if oh, you yeah. if you know Kurt Kim, you can see I had some dog walkers and I rolled them up in my sleeve. Mm. You know, yeah, you can absolutely. get away with that with Kendall stuff or with uh, Jesus Fuego's little cigar uh, cigarillos he does, but. But it's fun, and that's that's the main reason. If you do it right, if you listen and you just learn to be yourself, you can be a success selling cigars, make a little money, and enjoying life. Yeah, yep. and meet some great people. Some of the greatest people I know are not just cigar makers; they own cigar shops. Yes, or they I've just met in shops. And here's the thing about cigars that people, a lot of people, don't get: this little thing right here. This is the great equalizer. That it is. More business deals are done over a cigar than over a drink. And I tell you, I have smoked with people who made minimum wage all the way to billionaires. Mm -hmm. And nobody treats you any different. Right. Right. Well, well said, Andy. I, I say that often that, you know, I never said it that way. You put it way more eloquently than I did. But it is. It, it's like an even keel. If you go in a cigar shop, you don't know how much money the guy next to you makes and and you don't care like you just don't mm -hmm. care like we're just there to enjoy the experience and have a great cigar and you, you know there's a little bit of a love story with the cigars that you mentioned and we brushed over as well but you know i want to shine a little bit light on that like you rekindled with your first wife um mm -hmm. after relocating back to california and it happened to deal with because of your job within the industry. 
Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that's that's super cool. And the breast cancer story. I mean, they're, they're, we, we, we all have them. And when Nelson uh, approached me with y- you and the topic, I was like, what an awesome way to end this <laughs> crazy 2020 that not only we had here on Story Geeks, but just all of the listeners uh, that that they have had all the shop owners or the retail shop owners who tune into the show um, and, 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 and the manufacturers and the rollers and, and, and all the people that we interviewed had a one roller coaster ride of 2020. And before we, um, I want to invite you, Andy, to, if, 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 if we have you for another 15, 20 minutes, Nelson and I are going to do like a quick recap of, of 2020. If you want to stick around for that. And chime sure. in. Okay, cool. I just didn't know. I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, and then, um, Nelson, you want to uh, approach a final question for Andy? No, actually, 62. I just I want to. I know I can't call Andy. A Never friend ask yet an by age. De- <laughs> it's I, not I my can't age. Call Andy. Oh. <laughs> Andy's not a friend yet by definition. Um, he's definitely like an acquaintance. Uh, but I, I look forward to getting to know better. I, I Like I said, I, I told Joe, it's funny, the listeners don't really ever get to hear the behind-the-scenes discussions and, Thank and God. texts. Right? <laughs> Thank <laughs> God. Story. Espe- especially if I've had some bad caffeine. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. I mean? sometimes Joe gets going. Because I'm there's, always there's like, no question. that guy or gal, they ain't never coming on this show again unless but Paul I'll, gives me executive orders. <laughs> and, and I think Andy might remember this. Like, I... I I just had a particular conversation with Andy. I was like, man, Joe's got to talk to this guy. Like, I just, I, I knew we would all click. And, and, and Andy, I can't thank you enough for, you know, taking some time out of your retirement to, uh, to come on the show. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And, 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 and also, Andy, thank you for pivoting quickly, like snapping to, because, you know, we have people who interview three, four weeks out and, you know, don't know what earbuds are yet, but it's all good. Thank God. That, <laughs> that's why we have Johnny and all that stuff to put that all together. And, Here's and, Johnny. And, you know, <laughs> uh, jo- Johnny and Gustavo are awesome producers who produced this show um, there. And, and yeah, it's 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 been crazy. It's been a crazy 2020. Um, the next show will, will mark my uh, uh, third year anniversary. 17, 18, yeah. Uh, th- third year anniversary. So I've completed three years. So I'm entering my fourth year of Stogie Geeks. Um, I, I have so much to say about that. I'll wrap up on that l- later on. Um, but yeah, it's um, it, it, you. You definitely got to come back. Oh yeah, but anytime. Bef- but before you leave, what you, you know, you sold cigars in a different day, right? And mm-hmm. even though, yeah, okay, it was you know. Five, ten, 10 years ago ish, right? Mm-hmm. Eight, eight years ago, right? Um, what did what? What's your take on this industry? And you know, as a whole, you can you can get into specifics if you want to. What's your take on this industry? And we all know what 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 fascinates you about this industry. But what advice can you give to the new person entering the industry uh either as a rep or a broker or uh as a manufacturer or a boutique cigar or even a stogie geek listener or a cigar enthusiast who listens to stogie geeks like what advice if you could kind of kind of wrap that up and then we'll get into our year wrap up basically stay teachable that's the best thing i can tell anybody if you're new and you want to get into the cigar industry as far as a manufacturer, listen to the people who have walked the path before you. You talk to Carlito or to uh, to Jorge Padron or, you know, ask them. They're, they're going to be there to help you. Even Rocky Patel, they're all going to be there to help you. Uh, you. You want to look and see what the new guys coming on board are. Join the Boutique Cigar Association. You know, talk to Dr. Caffey, talk to those guys, find the good that they're doing successful, leave the stuff, the guys who aren't in the industry before you aside. If you're going to be a rep, don't be afraid to talk to the reps, talk to the ones that are doing well, 
talk to the ones that have been around a while and you know discover it but the bottom line is you got to stay teachable you know even even after repping as long as i did every once in a while i would find a hidden gem way to to learn more that that's the key mm -hmm. keep learning the whole way if you're in stogie geeks and you're a cigar smoker remember this if you, you if you just want to smoke cigars find what you like and like what you smoke if you want to learn how to be a cigar aficionado ask about retro hailing and read 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 look at forums look at facebook groups and the bottom line is it's always learning i mean yeah hell i've been smoking cigars you know for 50 years and i'm still learning every day and the guys who taught me have forgotten more than i will ever know right but don't be afraid to ask questions and here's one more very important piece of advice for anybody if you walk up to a cigar rep or someone in the industry and you have a question that you think may be silly and you ask it if they make you feel stupid walk away from that person don't don't talk to that person that's not a real cigar person that's not somebody in the industry who is going to stay there all right i would rather somebody ask a stupid question in their mind and learn from the beginning than to make mistakes like a lot of people do hey you guys have you ever you ever went out and bought yourself a, a real cheap cutter or a real cheap lighter and then it goes bad after a couple of weeks and you buy the next level up and it goes bad after a few months and by the time you're done you could have just bought a good one from the get-go in the beginning yeah. yes yep yeah it's, scissors th joe those are the kind of things don't be afraid to ask the guys who've been there yeah you know i i got one last thing to show you sure let me reach into my pocket here and see if I can pull it out. I bought a lighter before I worked for the company. I bought this lighter, I would say, 11 years ago, 10, 11 years ago. Bill Light's first time every time. Yep. It was a $20 lighter. It's been in the river twice and in the washing machine <laughs> once. You know... Ask the guys at the store. It's got a lifetime warranty, but I've never had to use it. Okay? Just a little bit of research, and you'd be surprised how much money you can save and how much you can learn. Yeah. yeah it is all experimental within your, your, your journey, you know? Mm -hmm. I noticed Nelson had, a, like, a little fancy gadget he was using. What the hell was that thing? Oh, you don't want to, It's my New England Cigar Militia pick. Oh. <laughs> the toothpick works the same. Oh, you know, Cynthia Fuente uses geez. toothpicks to, to use them. Listen, I own, yeah. I've only used the pick three times. And that, I got to tell you, shout out to La Aurora. That La Aurora Corojo, Dude. not a sponsor, but that La Aurora Corojo, I, I smoked that thing down to the nub. That thing was fantastic. Yeah, with your fancy pick. With your yes. <laughs> Oh, Nelson, I was like, oh boy, but I didn't want to interrupt Andy and say, what the hell are you using that pick for? Oh, let him have I, his I knew you, you appreciate know? it. I know, I know, here I am preaching, you know, it's about your journey, your journey, and Nelson's journey is freaking using picks. Let him have his fun. <laughs> if he's going to be picky, let him be picky. Yeah, right? Oh my God, okay. it's like it's like our other co-host, Drew, it loves our gadgets, they love hey, that what shit. happened to your own journey? Like, what happened uh, to your uh, own journey? What's hey, wrong man. with that? Hey man, you know uh, you are right. You are right. It's it's you 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 are. You, I, I'm standing corrected. Okay, I, I can be corrected. Right, you're right. And I corrected myself. I started to correct myself. It's like I know here I am. Oh yeah, it's your own journey. I'm like, what the heck is that, Johnny? Can you mark that time on the episode he said I was right? <laughs> I didn't want that marked. That he said <laughs> I was right about something. Marked, right. <laughs> well, you know. Um, thank you, Andy, for appearing on Story Geeks, and you're gonna stick around. So I'll thank you again. But uh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Stoya Geeks, what can I say, right? Uh, 2020 has been an amazing, amazing, uh, intricate, uh, crazy, uh, pivoting year for all of us, both in and out of our premium cigar lives. Um, pandemic had entered our, our, our personal lives. Uh, it affected shops. It affected people. 
Uh, we're obviously still going through that, but trying to shed some sort of a positive vibe on uh, 2020. I wanted to take you through a quick recap. Uh, Story Geeks 2020 started at episode 316. That was uh, Drew and myself's prediction show. Uh, for you story geeks who missed last episode, we did that last year. I'm sorry, last episode, uh, episode 349 of Story Geeks. So, um, you know, uh, you know, definitely want to check out uh, 316, see how close we were uh, to predictions, compare it to this year. There were some brands that uh, have f fallen off of my radar that have been on my radar for a, a solid two years. Um, there and there's some brands that I'm looking uh, forward to um, Can't forget uh, 317 where Drew bought gadgets I guess that's not gonna change because now here we are at 350 and Nelson has gadgets for those of you For those of you who follow Drew on social media. I expected the story geeks to pounce on this uh, He has a coffee cup that gives the temperature Now is that right? Yes now now Jesus had uh, given me a tongue, which tells me it's either hot or cold. <laughs> but apparently, Drew likes to know, uh, and he's not here to defend himself. So uh, it's that, that that those are the breaks, right? Um, he likes to know his temperature of his coffee. He's a little more precise. So he so through 2020 and through a pandemic, Drew had loved his gadgets. The first complaint of Story Geeks out of the gate came out January 20th of, of, of 2020 when I talked about PCA and got some feathers in a ruffle about how, <coughs> um, you know, PCA can't get out of its own way and I'm looking forward to that. And some other uh, co-host from uh, a, a host of other podcasts have said that I am not at the liberty to speak about PCA because I've never been to a PCA. Uh, I don't think podcast people belong at PCA, so my thought on that had uh, remained the same through 2020. So, uh, by the way, uh, phone's been the same since 1998. You can give me a call. Um, uh, January January 28th, we interviewed Nesta Placencia. Amazing. I cannot believe I talk about that interview at least once a month here on Story of Geeks, and I can't believe it was that far uh, there. Um, then, you know, Drew gave us some more gadgets. He introduced us to a couple of more people. Um, March 20th, we had uh, Dr. Gabby Caffey on. Awesome, awesome brand. Check them out. Um, our Caffey Trading Company. Caffey, for you listeners out there, is or viewers as well, is spelled key, a uh, key. K A. -A I, I got it. I got it, Andy. Thanks. <laughs> is uh, Dr. Gabby Caffey, Caffey Trading Company. is spelled K-A-F-I-E. Throw in Caffey Trading Company in there. Awesome coffees, awesome cigars. Definitely want to check that out for sure. Um, Drew and I did a pairing of cigars and liquor. That was when the infamous Drew came on to Story Geeks, and we, uh, we kind of started to reveal when um, uh, how he got – here on Story Geeks. I spoke about that last episode and I think the episode before because of Bloody Marys. Uh, so that's been a constant theme uh, throughout Story Geeks. Uh, April 14th, we had Dan Thompson from McAuliffe Cigars on. That was episode 325. Um, you might want to write that down because there's going to be a cross-reference episode on that. That was the first week of COVID of the lockdown. And uh, I had said that, you know, like the uh, 9 11 attacks, although they are different in scope, that they would leave scars on business that we're still dealing with today. And what I meant by that, and I did, uh, I did kind of articulate that on the um, on the interview, uh, St uh, Story Geeks uh, three three twenty five, is that like you know because of 9 11, we're still dealing with the TSA, and because of COVID we're still going to deal with X, Y, and Z or whatever, you know, uh, businesses have started to pivot. Um, to prove my point, Chipotle has, uh, you know, started some, some, you know, easy come, easy go. Checkout processes have been improved throughout there. I don't think that that's going to go away. I think that, you know, you know, Starbucks is now doing an express line 
where you know you can order your coffee on the app, do that there. You don't have to have any human interaction. Um, I'm not a person of word economy, so uh, in a post-COVID world, I'm still going to probably order my Starbucks, and I'll probably pay cash just because that's the old school way, right? Uh, there too, Nelson. I apologize for you not being able to chime in, but we're going to get to you in in chronological order. No, it's all good, brother. Uh, over there too. Um, that th- those are some of the episodes that that really started to to stick out. Um, I have a couple more. Um, Mike Bellity, uh, April 21 of 2020. Uh, again, we were still on lockdown. I remember doing that. I, I love, I love MLB cigar ventures. Uh, you know, Andy, you, you, you speak of getting to know someone outside of the cigar field. Uh, Mike Bellity not only sponsored my show when it was cigar club radio, um, but, like, you know, having a chance to golf with him was, an, an, you know, he took us to his, his country club that he's a member to, uh, had a chance to go to multiple events with him. Um, being on radio at the time, you're not allowed to smoke in buildings. I had a lot of non-smoking events that he went to, which always led to us going to a cigar bar afterwards and all of that t- uh, type type stuff there, too. Um, Drew had some more gadgets on April 27th, of course. Uh, April 28th, we had Eric Newman from J.C. Newman, episode 327. Super cool interview. Uh, speaking about um, his, his son, Drew, and how he wanted to start doing the series. Um, I kind of call them concept cigars, right? Like the Americana. And then he came up with another one off the top of my head. I'm having a brain fart. I'm sorry. I'm having a crazy day. Um, but you know, and, and so it was, it was, it was real cool to see that. Oh, he wanted to do the, um, El Electoro series where, um, you, you can actually go to JC Newman to the factory, uh, rent out mm-hmm. the room if you want to, obviously in a post COVID era, they had their anniversary this year. What a year to have an anniversary. We were supposed to film story geeks in, in April sometime there for the opening up for that when they did their factory renovations uh i will get my uh keister down there for sure uh on cinco de mayo uh we interviewed uh alec and bradley from alec bradley um that was a a a super cool interview uh they're learning about their stick they recently came out with with their third stick uh don't be surprised next year if they come out with with two more um you know sticks uh yeah i'm looking forward because all of their sticks are kind of like all over the map taste wise in my opinion and i think that uh, a lot of branding and experimentation and um you know uh fan, fan base is is to come uh there uh probably the most talked about interview at least from my mouth is may 18th you know who that is nelson no? Uh, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, I, I'm suspecting it starts with an M. M? No. Noel Rojas. No. Oh, Noel, your favorite guy. Noel. My, he's my, Master Blender. He's my 2020. He's my 2020. You know how Time Magazine has like the thing, I guess, you know. Man of the year. Uh, Great um, cigars. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, uh, you know, never really been a fanboy until 2020. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I do wear my Noel Rojas hats. I just don't wear them on set, but they are in the other uh, parts of my life there. Uh, right after that, we interviewed uh, Eric Bay of uh, Bl- uh, Black Star Line Cigars, another up-and-comer uh, there, too. That was episode 330. Um, Nelson's boy was June 8th. Who's your boy, Nelson? June 8th, Mr. Saka. Yeah, Steve Saka, right, from Dumber and Tobacco and Trust. That was a super cool interview. Uh, I apologize if I'm skipping through. I just could probably do a whole episode on, on interviews um, and a recap uh, there. Uh, July 17th, we had Andy Yaffe from McAuliffe Cigars. It was great to, to hear his story um, and, and how he became... Uh, with his position over with McAuliffe Cigars, that was um, that that was an interesting interview. There, uh, 
Who else? I only got two more pages. Cool. Um, <laughs> uh, almost there, Andy. Almost there, right? Is that all? <laughs> hey, I gave you the exit. You chose to stay, sir. Um, <laughs> uh, July 27th. Uh, this guy always brings a smile to my face. Always, always, always. Enrique Sanchez, Global Premium Cigars. Um, you know, he, he's all, too. He, yeah, he's always smiling, Andy. Always smiling. Like he, yeah, he man. you know, and, 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 and getting to know, you know, he's got little ones at home. I have a little one at home and, um, you know, they're never quiet. Now the good news is they're never quiet. The bad news is his kids are like eight years older than mine and they're still not quiet. So I don't know if, uh, eight years from now, I'm still going to be saying my kid's not <laughs> quiet, but then Nelson has older kids and they're not quiet either. So <laughs> True story. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, August 6th, Nelson has arrived here at G Unit Studios for the first time. Um, wow, it's been that long, Nelson. Wow. I, I thought it was cut like a month or two. I know. I, I still feel like a newbie, but Dude, like, it, I don't know. I that That was pretty cool. I was. I was I was a little starstruck that day, to be honest. <laughs> and then, of course, as you were um, privy to Andy, Nelson walks in, and he was never introduced to the ten minutes of chaos before each show, right? <laughs> but mm -hmm. anyway, on August sixth, we did the J.C. Newman Yagua unboxing. Uh, that that was, was really cool. That was a super cool. That was a super cool. Uh, thank you for JC Newman for allowing us to uh, do that. That was uh, awesome. Um, August 21st, uh, we interviewed uh, Nick Gervais and David Rivera. Um, one was from the Martinez Hand Rolled Cigars, and the other one was from a uh, cigar club. So, you know... Cigar Club started getting, you know, you, you can see where the Nelson influence is starting to come in, right? Like like introducing the Cigar Clubs into the show and whatnot. We always knew they were a thing. It's just uh, bandwidth for us is, 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 is pretty tight. So thank you for your efforts on that, Nelson, and for keeping an eye out, which is how we got to meet Andy, for sure. Uh, September 23rd, uh, Tim Wong. Uh, he's a broker. And he all... Uh, Yep, and he's a broker and uh, also represents AJ Fernandez Cigar Company. Um, interesting stories. What I love about these stories is, like, you know, we talk about product launches with specifically Pier 28, uh, you know, and, and, and how he held off because of the year and all of that type stuff, too. So that, that was episode 340. Um, September 23rd, uh, old school favorite of mine. Um, George Rico, Grand Habano Cigars. I, I, I love his creative stuff. Right? I actually smoked my last uh, second series Zulu that was out, uh, Andy. So I'm all done with those that, from there. So that, that lasted <laughs> me a, a, a couple of years there. He comes out with some creative stuff as well as his, his kind of flagship uh, stuff. What I love about him, Andy, is, is like, you know, he, he marches to the beat of his own drum. You know what yep. I mean? Like he freaking he he does George and that's it, man. He don't he don't get involved in any of this any of this uh craziness there. Um Nelson. September twenty fourth, Nelson started the news. I can't right. believe you documented yeah, that. Yeah. So <laughs> so September twenty fourth, Nelson had industry news and, and stuff like that, and you know that, was, uh, and 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 that's been a uh, a a uh, ongoing uh, thing since then, Nelson. Nelson, do you have any news for this week? I don't know if I hate you or love you right now. I just <laughs> don't know. I just don't know. Right, Nelson. Come on, I'm giving everybody a recap. Do you have any news, or do you need time to think about it? Uh, let me see. Do I have Do I have any? News? As you know, all story geek shows are unscripted, so I'll come back to that. Yeah, right? come back to Unless that. My I'll come up about with something. The Fuente and the Padron uh, compilation. Card. Oh, I already did that in the news. Oh, no. he's, <laughs> he's, he's all over that. That's... Nelson Nelson likes to be like like first like like person. Early like, kings, the pinks. 
Yeah, well, out of all of Nelson's news, I was I was floored by one story. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> right? I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. Next, <laughs> next, you know, there's no offense to Nelson. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job with with your news. Um, I I want to do like a a do 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 do. Nelson yeah, has Johnny, news. You, Johnny owes me. Our producer owes me for 2021. I want a little lead in <laughs> to the news. So Nelson, find us some news because then it'll be a, a well-rounded show. October fifth, this cigar is out of the La Aurora factory. Um, Emperor's Cut Cigars. We interviewed uh, Gregory Willis and Daryl Redmond from uh, Emperor's Cut Cigars. Got to hear their story. I mean, I don't know if you ever had one, Andy. Did you ever hear of them? Which one? Uh, Emperor's Cut Cigars. They're out of the La Aurora no, I can't factory. Say it. The, the, have you. Very. Let me tell you something. Everyone who started this collaboration of work does facets mm-hmm. in other industries, and they. It's kind of like. I mean, uh, 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 Nelson, you remember this? I'm sure well, you. I, I'm I was sure, actually going to say. I'm sure. I, wait a minute. I wait a minute. I'm, I'm. I'm sure Andy wasn't watching cartoons in the '80s, but no. I, I they remind me say, of Joe, Voltron. <laughs> you remember Voltron, had, Nelson? Oh. Fuck yeah. Well, right? Yes, like, I like, you, like, like, dude, they remind me of this guy is good at sales. This guy is good at shipping and logistics. This guy is good, is an engineer. Let's, and, then, and I'm missing four other facets of the business because I'm trying to do a quick recap why I thought it was going to be 10 minutes. I'm already like 18 minutes deep, right? Um, they remind no, me like the Voltron cigar company, right? If, if I can say, Joe, that Emperor's Cut, I think it was, it was Greg um, and Daryl, right, that we interviewed with? Yes. Yeah, I, that was one of my favorite. I mean, granted, I haven't been on the show long, but that was one of my favorite interviews on Stogie Geeks was with uh, the guys from Emperor's Cut. And, and I've said, like, I'm going to say it again. Sexiest name for a cigar in the world. Natural pleasure. Love that cigar. <laughs> yep. uh, and I've since had and I told them that on the interview, too. I'm like, that's the sexiest name I ever heard for stick. Yeah. And um, the the jazz that they just came out with, also a fantastic cigar. Not a sponsor. I'm just telling you from my own palate, great sticks and great interview. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely one of those interviews that 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 really sticks out uh, for sure. Uh, there. Um, uh, oh, can't forget October 12th. Raul from CLE. Um, what can Another I say about interview. Raul? Raul. Raul. <laughs> I love Raul. I call Raul like 10 minutes before a show. Want to come on to Story Geeks because the guy bailed? Sure, let's do it, Joe. And he comes right on and and, and awesome. And he actually, uh, Andy, actually, mm-hmm. and you met Christian, so you, you could either either have something to say or kind of reflect on this. But, like, like Christian Aroa is one of those people who remind me, oh, that's okay. We love dogs, right? Just dogs that don't bite. And uh, um, which we'll call it like Christian was so like aggravated at like, you know, like the pandemic and, and, and being stagnant and all of that. So he flew people. He flew his crew to do like mini events and all that stuff. And the windshield uh-huh. cracked. So on his the, airplane, yeah, on his airplane, the windshield cracked. And like Raul, like was like, well, I don't know what's going on, but they didn't tell him till they land. And he's telling us the story. This is Story Geeks episode three forty uh, three forty three. Uh, Somebody kicked up a rock all the way to the airplane. Huh? Something happened, and the freaking windshield <laughs> cracked, and they had to like make an emergency landing. And 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 and, and, and Raul was telling the story, like like the lands on the other side of the plane. Like I don't know where I am. You know, you can't go into the cockpit and like say, hey, is everything okay? You know what I mean? Because everything wasn't okay at the time Because you really don't know how severe it is Right? Until you, you land, I guess Right? Um, so that was a fascinating like insider Kind of uh, stuff there Raul, it's Johnny I'm still waiting for my spacesuit. Oh, Johnny <laughs> Yeah, Raul, Johnny's still waiting for his spacesuit For sure So Christian is a dead stick Yeah <laughs> You know, Christian Like, you know, and, and, and that's uh, and, and the year before when I interviewed Christian, uh, we start, we we totally talked about cigars for like ten minutes, and we spent like an hour and change talking about his son's baseball career. He was actually at a baseball field with his son doing baseball, and yeah, I got time for story geeks. Let's do that too. So that was it was uh it was cool to to grab his attention uh there as well. Uh, 
um, October 16th, Kevin from Rockefeller Cigars. Uh, always love when Kevin comes on the show. Looking forward Thanks. to, yeah, looking forward to um, to what um, he texted me some stuff. We 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 talk a lot about stocks uh, off air and stuff like that. And I told him that you know, uh, in my next life when I get more bandwidth, I want to do a stock show with him and have it subscription only. I told him that I have great attorneys, so we're all set for like stock advice and all of that stuff too. So we're good to go. Um, I, we're definitely going to have him on and 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 do a recap uh, there too. Uh, can't forget Nelson's boy Pat Pato uh, from 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 Pato Cigars, episode three forty five. Uh, why is he my boy? Because he, he, he was a guy we interviewed, and then did, we couldn't use his last name, so that was kind of whacked. Um, um, Nelson's boy again. Lee Mosh from Stolen Throne Cigars, episode 348. Great interview. That was cool. That was cool. Of course, uh, Andy, have you heard of Stolen Throne? I haven't heard of them yet. All right. Well, let me ask you this question. Are you a stick chaser like Nelson? Do you get like crazy, like crazy? I like fanatic? stick hunter. You can call me stick hunter. I like that you know. Better. There are some some cigars that come out and, and people like Kevin. Uh, Kevin you know, got in touch with me and, and wanted to send me some cigars. And I'm, he's one of the guys I'm trying to work with offline since we brought that up earlier. Yep. Yep. Uh, you know, and so there are some sticks that I do chase. Um, you know, I help out, you know, Gabby Caffey from time to time with stuff and helping him to get explored. But every once in a while, I see a cigar that's very intriguing to me. And yeah, I look for it. I wait and see who I can get it from or if it's not the problem is a lot of cigars aren't available in California, you know, until they've been out a while. Mm -hmm. So I got to contact people from other areas. Right. Right. <laughs> right. See you're on TV, little girl, little boy. Then we had, there you go. <laughs> then we had Lee Mosh from stolen throne. Like, like, like I said, um, that was a super cool interview for sure. Um, <laughs> there, uh, and then 349, we had our uh, Cigar Prediction show. That was our last episode before this episode uh, there, too. So uh, kind of a blur when I when I look at, like, all of that and, and what we did. Um, it's To me, it seems like a short list, uh, considering that everything that, that, that has happened in our industry. Um, but that that's what we were able to uh, squeeze in and produce for the Story Geek listener uh, for 2020. So, uh, hey Joe, fa favorite interview of the year? Oof. Um, tough, tough one, right? It is a tough one because yeah. because this year, see, this year was different because um, most most of them, I'm trying to think, they were all virtual this year. They, yeah, that's the problem. They were all, now, I know that's really cliche for some of the newer uh, cigar podcasts that are out. It's like, well, I've been virtual all the time. But, like, we're used to having um, people pop in, Stogie Geeks, random people. You know, Jose Blanco was in town and popped in, and obviously he hasn't been here this year. Um, you know, uh, Manuela Noah would, would, would pop in. Uh, Jack uh, Toronto popped in. Um, I'm going like Q4 of of twenty of uh, of 2019. Yeah, that's what yeah we we were in before. Yeah, so uh, you know like <laughs> they're, 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 <laughs> it's if you could you know you could you could follow me around with with cameras and and see what what we do in a day. It's pretty it's pretty it it it, it, it makes me giddy and I do it. So uh, you know and, and so we we would have like a lot of random pop ups that would 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 come in and nelson like you know that came to an end you know what i mean like that like that you know and then obviously in the beginning of march um you know we 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 went to a cyber security conference in the last week of february and came home and landed and then you know all kind of hell broke loose with, with 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 this pandemic so everything's been virtual it hasn't been a challenge but i think to answer your question nelson everything's been hot felt like you know hearing mr newman speak about his son like that was a hot felt interview hearing alec and bradley talk about their dad 
It's a hot felt interview. Hearing Raul talk about Christian in the airplane and, you know, is he going to die? Is he not going to like That's a hot felt interview, you know. Stolen Throne, um, the, the, the Empress Cuts, George Rico just doing his thing. Um, there were a couple interviews that, that we normally get that we just didn't get, um, you know, just because of time, time and in, 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 in scheduling, and those would be set up. But I guess, you know, if, if I had to pick one, um, I, 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 would, I would have to go with the Nesta Placencia interview, right, or the Steve Soccer interview, and then the Noel Rojas interview. And then for selfish reasons, the Dan Thompson interview for 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 McAuliffe. All right, so, so almost all of them. So <laughs> no, no, that was only four. That was that was four out of twenty two. You know, I've only been on the podcast for a short right? stint. So, but yeah, so I, don't I, run I your tell mouth. You. Don't run your mouth. It was four out of twenty two. So right. like, like 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 dealing like like dealing with like Nesta, like he's one of those people like you always learn, right? And my takeaways is when I have a chance to interview someone like Nestor, it's a learning experience for me, right? It's a learning experience for the story geeks, for the co-host, uh, for the producers, and, and to hear the stories. And, you know, like we, we, we talked about like Nesta and his, his kids wanted to get into the industry, but he had some rules first, in order for them to get an interview, you know what I mean? He talked about how they wanted, he wanted his kids to go through college first and have that background. Now, easily, let's face it, you know, if you're Alec and Bradley and your dad's Alan Rubin, and, or if you're Ernesto Placencia's kids, or, you know, uh, uh, Ernesto Perez Carrillo's kids, right? You, you can kind of, you got a great head start, right, in the industry for sure. But you have to carve out your own marking, and more importantly, like you have to get your own education and then do that for there because you don't know where this industry is going and you don't know where it's going to turn into because alcohol and tobacco and firearms are very fickle industries, kind of like the oil industry, right? You know, you get governmental support and big contracts and all of that. You know, life is good, stock is up, right? But uh, a big takeaway I got from uh, Kevin from Rockefeller is, you know, the you know he was he was talking about stock advice but th this also can be cascaded into the premium cigar industry is you know y you got to you got to know when you got to hope that you're right and you got to know when it's you you got to sit tight and be right you know what i mean and and yeah. and, and and so all those are all takeaways and i think that from a caliber of interview perspective this year Ha we have received more hot felt interviews out of, of, of them. And I think a lot of that is a reflection of the pandemic or they have more time on their hands. You yeah. Know? And I'll, I'll be honest, it, it was kind of a loaded question, right? Because, and, and I think you kind of hit on it without realizing like that you were hitting on it is every interview is different, right? I mean, I love, for example, I loved Emperor's Cut because I loved hearing about a cigar brand that is trying to come up with a new product. I, you know, Raul, I mean, if I had to say, like, what was my favorite, favorite episode, um, the podcast with Raul from CLE was probably the best one. Yeah. Uh, that's that's my number one, because you could see, like, his passion, and he's fun, and, you know, his, his stories about, you know, the plane and all that. <laughs> it, it was just great. It yeah. was great. But then you got, like, a Lee Marsh from Stolen Throne Cigars, who's also, like, an up-and-coming um, I'd say more up and coming than in like an Emperor's Cut, uh, sure. if you will, more boutique, right? Yep. Than Emperor's Cut. So, yeah, there is. Is there really a favorite? It depends on how you look at it. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, like you get to your point, like there's a heartfelt, but not just a heartfelt interview. There's a, a an angle to each interview. Um, like you said, like the, the discussion about the stocks, like that's not something we typically talk about. Yeah. In yeah. an interview, right? Like you just every single interview is so. And I know this sounds so cliche, but like every interview to me, and I am a listener too. I go back and listen to them. They're just so special and unique because you get something different out of every interview. You do. And I think a lot of that has to deal with the show platform. Uh, as you know, Andy, we didn't talk before uh, the 10 minutes of chaos before the show. And I had met mm -hmm. you and we were able to pick up a conversation because one of the things I like from interviewees is if you can't sit here for an hour and a half or so 
It's never an hour and a half. It always goes over, right? But uh, if you can't sit here and talk about your your craft, then don't come on the show. You know what I mean? Like, you know. Um, right on. I can tell you, yeah. having done interviews, my most difficult interview, and someone who has a uh, word economy like crazy still, so it's been six years that I've been interviewing people in the cigar community, either via Story Geeks or Cigar Club Radio, Glenn mm -hmm. K still holds the torch for word economy. You ask him a question, it's like a, a short sentence, next question. Like, boom. Like, you know what I mean? And so I remember being on the radio and like I'm asking him questions and I burned through. Now, you know, when you do show now on the radio, I did show prep because I had commercials that I didn't know that I was saying until like 10 minutes before because other people would stick commercials in. And I burned through all my questions in 15 minutes with, with Glenn. And I was like, oh my God, I have 45 more minutes. Uh, what am I gonna talk about? And it was cool. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a challenging. It was a, it was a challenge. That's funny, Andy, Andy knows Glenn. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so what's your take on Glenn when it comes to word economy, would you agree? Uh, yes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You know, so uh, anyway. There you go. Anyway, Andy, I want to thank you for appearing on Stogie Geeks. Uh, I want oh, to thank, thank you. you for having me. Yeah, I want to thank you for for sticking around uh, as well. Um, you know, you got to hear the the uh, our you know thirty minute rant on the year um, there. I, I I really wish I had more time um, to 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 express uh, to the Stogie Geeks listeners, uh, to our producers, uh, Johnny and uh, Gustavo. And to the staff here at Security Weekly um, that allow us to have this platform. Special thanks to Paul Asadorian. Um, it, you know, it 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 it's been a privilege and an honor. And I'm about to stop my 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 fourth year uh, here on the show, and um, super excited to what uh, 2021 can bring. Uh, Nelson, you're 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 a great addition to the show. So welcome uh, here, uh, Drew who halfway through the year uh, changed jobs and is like Magnum PI. You can never find him or, or James Bond or something like that. Uh, I do like Emperor's Cut's next cigar. It could be Voltron, right? <laughs> that could happen here Skeletor. too. Skeletor. <laughs> yeah, it's got, we, we, we had a lot of firsts here, uh, interview-wise here. It was a great year of interviews. Uh, Story Geeks, I want to thank you for listening and watching and giving us the email. Don't forget, send all of your hate email to Nelson uh, at stogiegeeks.com. Thank you. He will answer it. Nelson, I am going to call St uh, Steve Saka and get you a interview, at least in Q1. Dude, if you can do 2021 with Saka, no, I mean, he's... I'm going to call. Call him. Uh, I, no. <laughs> you want to know what a geek hey, I am? So this you guys, I think <laughs> Joe Cindy. knows this, but I'm going to throw this out there. I'm going to plug myself a little bit. Cigar underscore squad on Instagram, but... One of my highlights of 2020 <laughs> was Steve Saka commented on one of my Instagram posts. Wow. And I was like stoked because that is and, – and just so people know, the reason I'm a fanboy is there is not one Dunbarton tobacco stick I've ever had that I disliked. I, I like them all. And, Joe, if I could while I still have the camera. Oh, do you have news? Uh, I want to – thank you to Paul uh, 100%. I, you know, I know we don't get to chat often, but – the fact that this show exists is fantastic. And obviously, Johnny and Gustavo, like you guys are kicking ass producing this show. I'm always like blown away how quickly you guys turn this thing around. So hats off to you guys. And 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 Andy, again, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you, man. I, it, it's been fun, you know? Absolutely. Andy, stick on after I, we, we do the wrap up. I just want to talk to you for a couple seconds uh, yeah. there, too. Well, Story Geeks, it is that time of the year where I, I, I this is probably the one time a year that I get lost for words uh, there. I, I, I cannot thank Paul Azanorian for allowing this show to continue. Uh, I cannot thank Johnny and Gustavo. Uh, cannot th thank the listeners who watch us and listen to us and flash us emails and they share stories with me. By the way, my email is joe h at stogiegeeks dot com, and they share stories and 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 I try to keep up with everyone. I think I'm doing a good job with that uh, there too. Um, it, it it's been an amazing year. It's been a hot felt year. It's been a crazy pivoting year. I'm I'm looking well into 2021. Uh, not only what this platform um, is 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 uh, capable of doing, but 
the fact that like we're still here and we're still staying strong and we're still staying safe and still you geeks uh i want to just say thank you um for all the opportunities and to everyone who has participated on this show and had made this show happen uh happy holidays merry christmas and happy new year be safe wear a mask and remember we keep the conversation going all week long visit stogiegeeks.com visit us on facebook nelson cigar squad instagram check them out uh behind every cigar there's a story worth knowing get to your local brick and mortar i think andy had brought that point up andy thank you for appearing on story geeks story geeks we will see you in the new year happy new year peace